Hey, Retcon Raider here with another quick update on Phoenix Point. Followed by a bit of a bonus, both for you and for me. First things first, as you probably know by now, the Phoenix Point crowdfunding campaign has come to an end. As of the moment I'm recording this, the campaign has finished with a grand total of $765,948. It's a bit of a bittersweet ending to the campaign. On the one hand, the game has been successfully funded, and we even reached the first major stretch goal, which adds land vehicles like armored personnel carriers and tanks to the game. Unfortunately, we still ended up falling short of the second and third stretch goals, which means that, for now, we won't be getting the floating Phoenix base or the underwater combat missions. But, for what it's worth, there's still a chance. Snapshot Games will be accepting late pledges, which may still count toward those goals. And even if that fails, Julian Gollop has gone on the record stating that if the game does well financially, then there's still a chance those stretch goals will be implemented as post-release DLC. So, now that the campaign's over, what's next? Well, now the game will begin full-fledged development. By Julian Gollop's estimate, the game is currently only about 15% complete, so it's got a long way to go if they're still planning to have it ready for release by late 2018. As for me, well, I'll still be keeping an ear to the ground for any news involving Phoenix Point. And I do have at least a couple more videos in the works. For one thing, Snapshot Games recently released three more short stories on the official Phoenix Point website, and these are apparently the final stories we'll be getting. At least until the Phoenix Point Compendium comes out next year. So I'll be working on an updated Fiction of Phoenix Point video. Julian Gollop also stated that they're done revealing new enemies, at least for the time being, so I'll likely be doing an updated version of the Creatures of Phoenix Point video as well. I've been looking for an excuse to re-release it in a higher resolution, anyway. But for now... Well... That's right! Snapshot Games just sent me a copy of the Phoenix Point Alpha demo. Now, I know that by this point you've probably already seen what the demo has to offer, but that's fine. I'm going to play it anyway. Because how could I possibly not? Children will always be afraid of the dark, and men with minds sensitive to red dream pulse will always tremble at the thought of the hidden and fathomless worlds of strange life which may pulsate in the gulfs beyond the stars. And here we are in the Phoenix Point Alpha Demo. Now it's important to remember that this is not the final product we'll be receiving. This is a crude demo thrown together for display purposes. And it uses a lot of placeholder mechanics and placeholder animations. There's no procedural level generation, there's no destructible terrain, Weapons inflict a flat base damage, modified by range, cover, and armor, rather than having a variable amount of base damage. So, uh, at the moment, it's more of a procedural puzzle, almost. And, after watching Julian Gollop and Unstable Voltage play through this level a couple of times, I got a pretty good idea of how I would approach it. As you can see, I've gone with a uh, pretty straightforward team lineup. I've got two snipers, two heavies, and a ranger. And right off the bat, I'm looking at disabling those two crab gunners since they're the main threat I'll be facing on the first couple of turns. And that one managed to flesh wound my sniper with return fire, no big deal. Just move my second sniper into position, use one will point to activate my target location ability, and pick off his gun as well. Now not only have I neutralized those two gunmen as range threats, but I've also inflicted ongoing bleeding damage, so as long as they don't 
get close enough to use grenades or melee attacks, then they're pretty much a non-threat. And if I'm lucky, they'll bleed to death before I have to deal with them. Testing the maximum range for my missile launcher. Not quite in range, but that's fine. I'll just have to soften someone else up instead. But I am going to have to prioritize trimming down the Crab Queen's armor with a barrage of explosives as soon as I can. Right now I can barely hurt her with any of my guns. Since I don't have anything better to do just yet, I'll spend a couple of will points to set my guys into Overwatch. And I will take a pot shot at that crab man, and hey, look at that, I lucked out and disabled his head. That means he'll be bleeding twice as fast. Now, like I mentioned, these guys have uh, guns and grenades, but they're pretty slow. Now, those guys uh, with the shields, on the other hand, uh, you'll notice they don't have a shell on their back. I didn't notice that at first. They're weaker than a crab man that would have a full shell, but they're also faster. And the first time I played through this scenario, that caught me off guard. They managed to run right up to my lines and start killing my operatives because I hadn't been paying close enough attention to them. This time, though, I'm a bit more cautious. taking stock of things. And it's time to go ahead and start the barrage. I think I can catch all three people in this blast, so... Here goes nothing. And look at that. That's three targets wounded. Three points of armor trimmed off. And of course, I'll be following it up with a second missile. Since none of these guys have ranged attacks, the only important thing for me at the moment is to keep out of their physical range so that they can't rush up and melee me on their turn. That takes out the larva. And, lucky me, I took out the queen's head as well. A headshot like that would reduce her perception, which doesn't really mean anything right now because the stealth system's not implemented, but it also lowers her maximum willpower and causes ongoing bleed damage, again making things a little easier for me. And lacking any better targets. You see, I should have thrown a grenade before I moved. Now I'm too far away to hit her with one. So, lacking a better target, I'll just be taking a shot at her torso instead. Yeah, there we go. Now I do need to start disabling her claws. Those things can wipe out the majority of a soldier's health in a single swing. If you take both of them out, it drastically reduces her versatility. She has to get closer to use her stomp attacks, which are still deadly, but require a lot more fine maneuvering on her part. There goes one of the claws. Here come the crab men. Fortunately, they start far enough away that I won't have to worry about them for at least a couple more turns. That gives me time to focus on the crab queen. Though I did make a bit of a mistake here. 
and left one of my snipers too close. And he's pretty much instantly out of the fight. Yeah, that attack inflicted almost enough damage to kill him and disabled his arm. Now that he's only got one arm to work with, he can still make pistol attacks, but he can't use his sniper rifle. And he'll be dead in two turns from bleeding damage. I'll just tuck my grenade in there to trim off a little more armor. Here, I'm at the wrong angle to hit her other claw, so I'm just going for the carapace again. I've got her low enough that I think I can finish her off this turn. I'm not 100% certain, but things are pointing in that direction. See, none of the other crabmen are close enough to be much of a threat, so I can afford to focus all of my remaining soldiers on the Crab Queen. And again, lacking a better target, I just start cutting into her legs. Now I disabled her leg in one shot there, which of course inflicts overall damage to her health pool, but also reduces her speed. She'll have a harder time catching up with the rest of my soldiers, and it'll cause an additional point of bleeding damage every turn. There's not a whole lot I can do with this guy anymore. He's dead in one or two turns, so I'm going to use him as best I can. See, he can't use the sniper rifle, but he can still take pot shots with his pistol. And he does still have some will points to spend. To use the extra attack option. Say, which will allow me to pop a second shot into the Crab Queen. Crippling another one of her legs. So at this point, it looks like I can finish her off. And there she goes. I didn't even bother moving my sniper since there are no other threats close enough to chase me down. At this point, all I have to worry about are... Oh, there's another gunner. They didn't see him. Now, unfortunately, that hastens the demise of my sniper. But on the other hand, he was going to be dead in two turns anyway. This will just make it slightly faster. No! Right, well, that did cost me one willpower across the rest of my troops. But at this point, the battle's pretty much in the bag. It's just a matter of whittling these guys down before they can close the rest of the distance. You'll notice that the remaining crabmen are hugging cover. At the moment, cover reduces damage a bit, but it doesn't do much else. In the uh, final game, when they have a more realistic ballistic trajectory for bullets, cover will actually protect certain parts of your body depending on your positioning. Now I would like to pick off that third crab gunman's gun arm to reduce the threat he poses, but I've moved my sniper into a position where I just don't have line of sight on him. So instead I'll be whittling down the shield crab men. When the crab men actually set up their shields, they provide themselves with full cover 
in the direction they're facing. That actually prevents me from being able to target any part of their body other than the shield arm. Thankfully, I'm far enough away from the crap gunman that he can only inflict minor injuries. just in case one of them does try to rush me. I'll set my last heavy on Overwatch. Oops, speaking of which, I'm pretty sure he's about to get his chance. Yep, there we go. And now... I should be able to move into a position where I can take a precision shot and cripple that crab gunman before he can do any more damage. There we go. At this point I just have to mop these guys up. That guy could still do some damage with his grenade arm, but considering he's standing out in the open, I shouldn't have any problem finishing him off. I do still have this guy over on the left side, though. But I think I can whittle him down, too. At this point, it's just a matter of inflicting enough... Ooh, another disabled head. Uh, disabling enough limbs so that they bleed to death. Two disabled locations, that crab gunman's dead as soon as I end my turn. Which is now. And back to my turn. It looks like the last crab man can't decide what he wants to do, so... I will make the decision for him. Thus the day is saved. The crab mother is slain at the cost of just one Phoenix Point operative. I think that's a fair trade-off. And there you have it. That was my second time playing with the Alpha demo, though it's sure to be far from the last time I play with it. Uh, speaking of which, I think I'll go ahead and sign off so I can do some more research. Oh, who am I kidding? I'm just going to end up spending the rest of the night playing the Phoenix Point demo. So for now, this is Retcon Raider signing off. Thanks for watching. Oh, and remember, although I do love talking about, and playing, Phoenix Point, you can find out all the latest information by visiting the official website and the official crowdfunding campaign on FIG. Links are in the description.